So over the last week, I've been going through some of the changes in Amendment 2 of the 18th edition. And today I want to talk about a change with regards to the testing procedure. So there is a subtle change in the wording around the insulation resistance test. So if you remember back to the 18th edition when it was published in 2018, one of the changes that happened then was we could specify on the test sheets which voltage was applied on the insulation test. We could say 250 volts or 500 volts. So previously, the 18th edition said, in regulation 643.3.2, the insulation resistance measured with the test voltages indicated in table 64 shall be considered satisfactory if it has an insulation resistance not less than given in table 64. So that would be for 250 volts, a minimum of 0.5 mega ohm, and that's for self and pelv. And then when testing at 500 volts, the minimum uh, acceptable reading would be one mega ohm. Then there was a paragraph that said that where there is equipment such as SPDs or other equipment that may influence the results of the test or be damaged, such equipment shall be disconnected before carrying out the insulation resistance test. And then it went on to say, where it is not practicable to disconnect such equipment, the test voltage may be reduced to 250 volts, but the insulation shall have a value of at least one mega ohm. So this is what has changed in Amendment 2. That last sentence that says, where it's not practicable to disconnect such equipment, the test result may be reduced to 250 volts, that has been removed. And it now says, uh, on regulation 643.3.3, .3, where connected equipment is likely to influence the measurement or result of the test or be damaged, the test shall be applied prior to the connection of such equipment in accordance with Table 64. Following connection of the equipment, a test at 250 volts DC shall be applied between live conductors and the protective conductor connected to the earthing arrangement. The insulation resistance shall have a value of at least one mega ohm. So that's a subtle rewording to the process there. So basically where we were able to use that 250 volt test uh, where it's not possible to disconnect equipment. Now it's saying what we have to do, we have to test at 500 volts before connecting any equipment that may be damaged or may influence the test. And then at a later stage, we can reduce the test to 250 volts after that equipment is connected. So what this basically means is doing the insulation test at 500 volts before connecting any sensitive equipment. Now that could be things like uh, smoke detectors, it could be uh, USB sockets. Another thing is neon indicators. If you've got a switch for your spur with a neon indicator, if you've got that in the circuit, that will tend to look like you've got a short when you do the insulation test. So anything like that, you can't connect before doing the insulation test. Now, another thing that's worth bearing in mind is that this is not the first time that the process for the insulation resistance test has changed. When I started out back in the days of the 16th edition, it was required to do the insulation test between live conductors and the protective conductor. But in 2008, when the 17th edition was introduced, the wording for that test was slightly changed to say that the insulation resistance shall be measured between live conductors and live conductors and the protective conductor connected to the earthing arrangement. Now this is a, a really important change that happened and what it basically means is rather than just testing between the live neutral and CPC, you're actually testing between the live conductors and CPC connected to the earthing arrangement. So that's going to pick up um, any metal containment. So if you've got a fault between a live conductor and say a conduit or, or a piece of trunking, then that test will pick that up. So it's important to bear in mind that whilst we're looking at these changes in the 18th edition amendment two, also to bear in mind that change that happened in 2008. So what this basically means is, is that we've got to do the insulation resistance test before sensitive equipment is connected but we need to have the CPCs connected to Earth. So that's a good example of how a subtle change in the wording of the wiring regulations can make a difference in how we actually do the work on site. I'm sure I'm going to be talking more about changes in Amendment 2 of the 18th edition, so if you'd like to be the first to hear about my latest videos, please click over here to subscribe to my channel.